No, oh, man, it's tough. I really can't work this one out. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living. I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines. I rap through thought. Good vibes. Ahoy, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host, Yan. I hope you're doing well, mate. I really do hope that. Welcome back to Chelsea News. Uh, of course, the twice, thrice daily series here on the channel where I reflect on what's being said about Chelsea, giving you my sweet, humble opinion, more importantly asking for yours. Some positive news continues in terms of players speaking about the manager and how the feel-good vibe and hope expectation continues for Chelsea's success. But a thing that I don't know how to feel about is Conor Gallagher set to leave Chelsea? Of course, this is one that we thought was always on the cards, but we thought it was on the cards early doors before Kai Havertz was sold, before Mason Mount was sold, before Christian Pulisic was sold. Do you know what I mean? All of the old cards. Now, I'm an advocate of changing, switching, starting again. Hell, it's easy to feel like that once you finish 12th in the Premier League. But he's a good player, Gallagher, and he looks like he's getting better, and he does genuinely love Chelsea. And we all thought that he'd probably be, like, the quintessential Pochettino player for a few reasons, but apparently set to go. Of course, he represents pure profit, which is alluring for the ownership, because it's free money on the financial books. We're going to get into it today. I thank you for joining me. If you like um, listening to the headlines via my mouth and uh, appreciate my opinions, please do drop a like and you are welcome to subscribe to this channel, Football Therapy. All right then. So before we discuss the uh, Gallagher paradox to, and how to feel, <laughs> the good player that loves Chelsea who's informed that probably should go interesting uh, just uh, gonna cite Cy Phillips on Twitter quickly who's aggregated a couple of quotes from key players talking about Maurizio Pochettino Thiago Silva almost certainly Chelsea's capitan to be which would be nice isn't it just on a minor fleeting tangent Thiago Silva's time at Chelsea has been such an unexpected wonderful heartwarming story in largely difficult times as well um you know, winning the Champions League and just becoming just an absolute fan favourite and, you know, maintaining his Rolls-Royce status. He is very much a captain, a leader, a senior figure, a figurehead, a role model. So for him to get a season as captain would just feel nice in his, like, what, four years at Chelsea? Is it four years? Lampard's first year, Tuchel's second year. This this would be the fourth year, the fourth year. Wow, considering he's signed a 36-year-old and put him on a four-year deal. That's absolutely wild. Absolutely wild. Anyway, he said this about Maurizio Pochettino. Quote, The trust and confidence with Maurizio is starting to be very interesting. He's put things on the right line and direction so that all the players can have a good season and perform better. It's kind of like... I mean, obviously, this is translated from Portuguese, but unless it's not, and that's why it sounds like that... <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah you know interesting is like shocked almost like these Chelsea managers coming in because because obviously Thiago knew Thomas Tuchel from his time at PSG but he joined Chelsea when Frank Lampard was managing and he's maintained a wonderful relationship with Lampard um Lampard's spoken about messages he's, he's sent him like beautiful messages when he left and you know he published all his social medias when Lampard was sacked the first time about about uh, well he's only been sacked once lest we forget he was interim the second time but you know he's uh he's um left really really nice messages but he's he's obviously had loads of managers here and for him to say this Maurizio guy is different it's really quite telling but that's not the only player I wanted to cite a quote from uh, Twi uh football London has uh, cited quotes from Michael Mudrik and uh, he said this. I feel good because I was playing under Pochettino, our manager. It is nice, it is enjoyable, and it is a new team. So this definitely is him speaking English, not Ukrainian. But he's saying, I'm feeling good because it's a new team and because we're being managed by Maurizio Pochettino. He says, you have not seen all my potential. You've seen 20, uh, only 20%. So dude, who is already lightning fast and, you know, built as dense as, like, granite... 
and uh, he's got a finish in him. He's saying that I'm going to be five times better than this. Maybe the hyperbole, <laughs> sweeping statement, hyper, uh, being hyperbolic, maybe. But this young kid's seriously ambitious. He's not going to stop working. And uh, for him to say that, it's actually really exciting. Like, you ain't seen nothing yet. Ah, uh, yeah. Very exciting indeed. There is a lot of uh, positive stuff going around. I'm feeling good as a Chelsea fan. I'm an riddled in anticipation and excitement for the upcoming campaign. But Nizar Kinsella, who's of course in the USA covering the Blues for the Evening Standard, has written Conor Gallagher is set for Chelsea exit as Blue sound, Blues sound out Mohamed Kudu's and transfer push. So this is interesting. Of course, the three right wing attacking mid targets remain Rayan Cherky, Mohamed Kudu's and the latest and possibly most exciting for some, certainly for me, as you probably can tell from my recent content, Michael Elise, who I believe is a wonderful young player. Um, it does seem like now, by the way, that the two most likely are Kudus and Elise, because the Cherky stuff has gone quiet, but you never know with Chelsea. Anyway, Nizar writes this, Gallagher is ready to leave Chelsea after being deemed surplus to requirements, with Tottenham and West Ham leading the fight for his signature. He'd be a lovely little player for Tottenham, you know, for uh, Ange Postecoglou, and, um, you know, they do have good players still. Although Tottenham never really had, like, a really good team, despite pushing for... I say honours, but you know, reaching a Champions League fight. I mean, he's, the, the best team they ever had was under Pochettino, and that was largely because the players were, you know, playing beyond some of their parts. And he, I don't know, dude, like, yeah, I, I, I don't think Gallagher would be, other than like Harry Kane, you know, who's who, who you're really excited to go and play for. But, you know, ultimately he needs to go and be a, a key figure somewhere. And if, if he has been deemed surplus to requirements, isn't his our rights here? I guess he's been told that by the Chelsea hierarchy. That's their decision. We can discuss that in just a second. The 23-year-old who scored in the 4-3 win against uh, Brighton in Philadelphia uh, and also in the 5-0 freshing of Wrexham. He does love a goal last week. Is being offered to clubs. So there you go. That's how you know your surplus to requirement if you're actively being offered to clubs. West Ham are ready to push ahead of Spurs after banking 105 million quid from uh, selling Declan Rice to Arsenal. Which, by the way, that 100 quid to the fives add-ons, the 100 quid is on the table. It's not an installment. So they just got straight 100 million on the books. West Ham. You know, 50 million for Gallagher then. Do you know what I mean? Like, pay up. If you pay me, I believe as the lyric goes. The Hammers want two midfielders to replace their former captain and have Joao, Paulinha, Dennis Sakara, and James Ward-Prowse on their shortlist. Dennis Sakara. Look, man, if they sign Paulinha... Uh, pa Paulinha? Yeah, I think Paulinha. Paulinha. Uh, if they sign Joao and they sign Conor Gallagher, that's two great players to replace Declan Rice. Uh, Paulinho made Fulham so much better last season. He's an incredible player. And uh, Gallagher's really effective, dude. Um, like I said, I keep saying, I will talk about it in a moment, like the, you know, the philosophical, you know, edge to this. David Moyes has tried to sign Gallagher last summer, but the former Chelsea boss Tuchel blocked his exit. I remember it well. Spurs need homegrown players and the potential replacement for Pierre-Emil Hoiberg, who has asked the, to the club to let him go so he can join Atletico Madrid. <laughs> Don't blame him. <laughs> Chelsea have a shortage of senior midfielders. But would still let, but would still let Gallagher go. He has been at Stamford Bridge since the age of six and has always publicly said that he wants to stay. That he loves Chelsea, he wants to stay. He even said like he'd pay for Ch play for Chelsea for free. He increasingly accepts he will need to leave after not being offered a new contract, and there's only two years left on his current deal. I think it's more the case of we're not gonna, you know, necessarily use you, man, or at least not as a starter ever. Gallagher rejected a move to Everton in January, but was open to joining Newcastle, who had a loan offer turned down. Oh yeah, Newcastle. I mean, pfft, Newcastle was. An incredibly exciting footballing project. Chelsea didn't want to strengthen a rival for European qualification. Lol, we finished 12th, but Newcastle have since called their interest after spending big on Italy international Sandro Tonali. Incredible acquisition for them, by the way. Pochettino pl uh, continues to play Gallagher during preseason, uh, his positive preseason campaign. It's like the ultimate shop window, though, isn't it? Gallagher played the 45 minutes against both Wrexham and Brighton. He has, however, played fewer minutes in preseason 
Then Chelsea's youthful option, Andre Santos. Different players, though. I swear Andre Santos is more of a six. While Akani, Chukwameka, and Cesare Cassidy have all played the same amount of time. He's just having a gander, isn't he, Pochettino? He's having a look at everyone and seeing what's going on. Pochettino is asking his younger players to fight to impress and be part of his first team squad for next season, but offering no guarantees. Of course, in this morning's video, if you're yet to watch it, we spoke about how uh, Angelo Gabriel, the right winger, Brazilian 18-year-old left footer, looks set for Strasbourg as their head scout has already confirmed that after the US tour... Uh, he will go to the Liga side on loan, which, um, yeah, there's details on that in the previous upload. Go check that out. The new manager is a fan of Gallagher, but also accepts Chelsea's decision at as his squad is set to be in flux throughout the transfer window. Mm, I think, I think, yeah, okay, well, we're going to talk about it. Just let's just uh, wrap this uh, up this article. Chelsea are working on signing midfielders, and of course, Pochettino wants them, quote, as soon as possible. Caicedo is the primary target, and negotiations are ongoing, but there's yet to be a breakthrough. Deserby revealed that Chelsea have not yet met Brighton's conditions, which is believed to be an £100 million asking price. Woof! The Brighton manager added that Chelsea should offer Levi Cowell. Yeah, we're not going to go into that. Excuse me, Pochettino waved that away, didn't he, saying he's not going anywhere. Chelsea have also sounded out more attacking options in Mohamed Kudus. Well, this is for the front line, isn't it? Who wants to leave Ajax? Um, of course, uh, Romeo Lavia and Gabri Vega remain options for the midfield for Chelsea. Um, the sporting... So this is a quote from, I believe, Pochettino. Yeah, the sporting directors, when Stanley and Stewart, and the board are working so hard to bring the right people and the right players and profile to the squad. I'm so happy the way they are working. Chelsea remain, of course, in, in talks to sign uh, Montpellier forward Eli Wahi, which I spoke about this morning. And it's confirmed here also by Nizar Kinsella that Chelsea will send Brazilian winger Angelo Gabriel to our first satellite club out of the multi-club model, Strasbourg in League 1. Right, interesting. How do we feel about Conor Gallagher then? Well, it feels like the last bastion of, or nearly last bastion of, I'm Chelsea, I want to play for Chelsea. Of course, the best representation of that left is Rhys James, probably future captain, proper Chelsea, absolute warrior on the pitch, need we say more. Um... And then in terms of, like, Cobham players, you've got Bria. I think Bria does want to play for Chelsea. Uh, and it's just sort of been out of the public eye a little bit. But he says all the right things generally. And then you've got the likes of, you know, um, Lewis Hall, who's very, very quiet. He's one young player of the year. But I think he probably would like to play for Chelsea. I don't know. And then Levi Colwell, the aforementioned in this article, I think he's very career-driven. And um, should Pochettino said, well, you're not going to get guaranteed minutes, he might have gone sell me to Liverpool or Brighton then. Do you know what I mean? Like career-driven kids. And that's okay because they probably just ultimately want to perform and be the best. At least they're not just going to take the pay, you know, the money. They want to be the best and do some progression. But I don't know, Gallagher's just really wanted to play for Chelsea. You know, he's been there since six. He's a boyhood Chelsea fan, boyhood club ting, and um, all the managers utilised him largely, like I've said in previous uploads, as a closer. You know, he's really good off the bench. Um, he's tactically versatile. But at the same time, if we are truly going to look at this squad and starting 11 holistically in a data-driven way, which has long been the sort of slogan of the new ownership... Um, then maybe you just get specialist players for specialist positions and you we've said like these versatile players like your Havertzes and even like you know as heartbreaking as it was your Ruben Loftus Cheeks um, they need to you know they're surplus to requirements now now you have a right winger playing in right wing you have a left winger playing in left wing do you know what I mean of course there's a bit of versatility with Nkunku or whatever but you have a double pivot of Enzo Fernandez and Moises Caicedo no more silly buggers play you know horses for courses and all that kind of stuff do you know what i mean like you know no longer adspi laqueta or trevor chalaba playing right back malo gusto a right back playing right back behind reese james and of course where we did see conor gallagher play under pochettino of late he played in the double pivot and he's not a double pivot player and maybe there's elements of his game that doesn't match Pochettino's number 10 ideals, which is strange because I have a slight inkling he's got those concerns for Nkunku, who is a number 10, but we'll see what happens as that story unfolds. 
Anyway, I want to put it to you guys. How do you feel? Because a lot of people were like, well, now Havertz and Mount's gone and we've got to keep Gallagher, you know, and like, you know, he's getting, he looks like he's getting better as well. He's just scoring. And like the end of last season, he was like the only one trying and he was the only one scoring goals under Lampard. Do you know what I mean? And obviously it's raised his stock. He, you know, when Chelsea go to buyers, they'll be like, well, look at the end of last season. He was good. He plays almost every game for England, you know, maybe off the bench, but he's always utilized and he's very young still. So he can get eventually a starting spot. And, um, you know, he's got an amazing preseason. He's in really good shape. He's got experience for Swansea, Charlton, Palace, great season in the Premier League. Uh, and, you know, Chelsea have turned to him of multiple managers. 40 million pounds or 45 million pounds, you know what I mean? Chelsea can demand good money for him. And like like we said, it's that phrasing him, pure profit. He's an academy uh, asset. So his money goes straight onto the books. And Chelsea still might do something a little bit razzle-dazzle at some point in the transfer window. I still think these new owners have got something a bit special up their sleeves, uh, for better or for worse. <laughs> So let me know what you think. Comment down below your opinion on Colin Gallagher. I'll be very uh, keen to learn everyone. It's a shame you can't put polls in YouTube comments. Don't you think that's dumb? And why have not YouTube not done that yet? So you can just pin a poll. That would be so good. I can't believe they haven't done that. Anyway, I look forward to seeing you on the next one. Turn the bell on. Peace.